level three. So for level three, it gets tougher. Flowers. Georgia O'Keeffe. You're going to know a little bit about Georgia O'Keeffe. For this one, art terms that you might want to know. Would be color, could be shape, maybe a little line. But really what it's looking at is emphasis. Emphasis. What? Oh yeah, thank you. And balance, too. Emphasis and balance. Excellent point. Glad he's here. So, when we talk about emphasis, we're talking about the focal point. And the focal point would be the middle of this flower, this bright yellow thing coming out at you, right? So this would be the emphasis of it. If you look at the whole thing and I said to you, what do your eyes go to first? And inevitably, you're going to say, this area right here. Yeah, exactly. What? Oh, that's right. Balance. Yeah, I can't forget about balance. So glad you're here. So the balance on here could be either symmetrical, radial, or asymmetrical. Symmetrical would be if I had this yellow area right in the center of this piece of artwork right here. That would be the center, and I could put a line going straight down, and everything on the left and everything on the right looks pretty much the same. There would be symmetry. It could be a radial design. If I had the, this round thing right here in the middle, it's almost like a circle going around. That's what a radial design is. It's something that's circular. It could kind of reach that. But not this. This is asymmetrically balanced. Asymmetrically balanced would be the opposite of symmetry. So if I put a line down the middle, this side does not look like that side. This yellow circle inhabits this part of this piece of artwork. And there's nothing over here on this side. I've changed the emphasis. I've changed where you focus. I've shifted the balance so that it looks different. Let's take a look at Georgia O'Keeffe first, and then we'll start talking about how we're doing this painting right here. Georgia O'Keeffe is an American artist, and she worked in abstraction. And there's different levels of abstraction. You can make something that really doesn't look like anything. It almost looks like a mess to something that really does look like nothing to things that sort of look like what they're supposed to look like. Say this flower right here that Georgia O'Keeffe painted. And she would throw off the focal point. She would go so close up to these flowers that it really started to look more abstract. Here's one of her landscapes. I mean, that looks very abstract for a landscape. You know, you wouldn't look outside and see a landscape that looks like this. She abstracted it to make it look more interesting, to bring out more color, to bring out the feel of the area, rather than trying to paint a photograph of the area. She wanted people to pay more attention to the world around them. Why paint a flower so up close? Because sometimes people don't stop to look at a flower up close. And because she looks, up at, she looks at flowers so up close, she notices this beauty that's within them with all these values of colors and things and she wants to share that with anybody that wants to see it. Okay, Georgia O'Keeffe, close-up flowers. And when you do this you can even abstract it even farther than what you're seeing here. I mean this really looks like a flower. You could go even closer to make people wonder if it is a flower or not. And the pictures for the flowers, you can get them anywhere. You can get them from a magazine, a photograph, you can go on Google and look up flowers and get ideas from there. Here, hold on to this. Thanks. So you're going to do this, and the tools that you're going to... What? You can't see. You're not real. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was rude. I'm sorry. Uh, tools that you can use for this. I would say pastels are good. Really good with pastels. Colored pencils. Awesome colored pencils. That's what I did for this one. More on that in a second. And crayons would work for this too. Markers won't work so well because I really like to see you blend the colors together. Let some of the red get into the purple, some of the purple get into the red, or whatever colors that you use. Another thing I'd love you to do is when you make these, bring them off balance. Change that emphasis. Put it somewhere else. Throw it off. Make it a little more asymmetrical. That'd be really good. And with the colors, 
I'd really like you to try to reach for complementary colors. The center here is yellow, petals are purple. They're opposites on the color wheel. Let's go over the opposites. Yellow and purple are opposites. Blue and orange are opposites. Those are two really good colors to use for this sort of a thing. They really dance off each other. And also red and green. Now there is red in here. I chose red. Uh, red is a warm color, purple is a cool color, but they're next to each other on the color wheel. And I didn't want the whole petal to be purple. I wanted to splash them another color in there. But there's enough of this color that makes this yellow really stand out. I hope you like it. Oh, thank you. Really? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a, a simple sketch first for this. All right, I'm going to go for a simple sketch. And being that the flower is oriented in this direction, I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to start, and I'm going to lean this up on the side. And uh, I'm going to sketch this all out. Getting a lot of a lot of messages from my brother and my sister today. Okay, so I know that the, and I'll show it to you one more time, I know that this is not in the center, it's off-center, it's down to the right, and I have, and I can even count the petals that are there, it doesn't have to be exact. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to use the same colors that are on here, just the structure and what the colors are doing. There's another one. All right, so it's not in the middle, it's down to the right, so I know that this area is right here. It's going to put a, a big circle right, that, right there for it. And I'm going to start building all the petals that are coming out of it. There's one here. And uh, I don't think my camera, because I had to change which way this is going, I don't think it's going to fill... There's going to be some parts in here you're not going to see. So I'll, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, see if that works. You can see a little bit more of the paper there. Uh, let's see, there's one here. And there's one coming off down here. And there's a little guy over here, which goes over to here. And this one stops there. So those are all the petals that I put on there. It's not super exact but it's getting there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pencils now. And I really can't blend with them. There's no real blending that's gonna go on here. So I'm going to take orange and yellow. I want the orange because it's closest to yellow. As a matter of fact, I might use this orange because I got a, a pretty good range of color. I'm gonna use this orange and the yellow right here. And the reason why I want this yellowy orange is so that I can see everything that I'm making here. So, Because if I outline everything in yellow, I'm not going to be able to see all the different things I'm drawing. And I'm just going to start making all these little uh, parts in the middle of the flower here. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to take out as many yellows as I could see in my pack. Okay, that's good. And I'm also going to take a little bit of a little reddish purple right here. It's not, not altogether red. All right, it's got a little bit of a purple in it. Yellow and purple are complements. And when you do this, you want those opposite colors. So if you have blue, you know, you're going to have some orange in there. If you're going to do red, you got to have some green in there. All right. I mean, this works. I mean, this yellow and this red works, but this red has got this pink tone in it and some purple tones in it. That's what makes the colors bounce. So I'm really going to show that in the drawing that I'm about to do. So for everything I'm making here, I'm going to take my brightest yellow. And I'm just going to start filling in one of these to give you an idea of what I'm going to do with all of these. There's my yellow. Now I know that there's a shade on this also. So I'm going to lightly put in some of this around the edge. Let's get this one. And I'm going to work this in also. 
and those two colors are going to blend together to create a bit of a shadow on the bottom. So hopefully that, let me see if it came out pretty good. Yeah, it's coming out pretty good. Uh, so I got a little bit of a shadow here. So all of these are going to have that. They're all going to have that shadow on it. And what I'm going to do for my surprise performance at the end, I'm going to make a deeper shadow underneath like that. And ordinarily I wouldn't make the shadow that deep, but I will with this so that I could show you what I'm doing at the end. So I'm going to take a break from the video and I'm just going to finish all these up and then we'll get started on the pedals. Okay, so I just got finished with doing the center area right there. And what I did was I added an extra color in there. Each one has a little bit of that reddish purple, some yellow, that orange yellow that I used. And I also used this brownish gray color. It's not like super brown. It's, it's kind of like a, like a tan. And I used that in here for like really deep shadow areas. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute those red spots for the purple. Even the ones that are in here. These center areas are going to be the, uh, the red. And I want them to blend. But I know that this is the reddest part. So this whole section in here is going to be a nice dark purple. I'm going to go in there and really load it up. Now you can't see it, but my cat is laying down in front of the flower. And every time I color, the whole table shaking and the cat is wobbling and somehow is still asleep, even with me talking this loud. It's a little strange. So what I'm gonna do here, just like the middle part, I'm gonna do one petal to give you an idea of what to do. And then I'm gonna take the video off, do the rest of the petals and then pop back on to show you what I have. Again, that's for the, um, the speed of the video. So you'll, you'll get an idea of what to do with one pedal. So then you're going to repeat that process for every other pedal. And then you'll see the finished product I have. And if anything else comes up, I'll tell you about it. It's pretty dark. It's pretty dark. And now that I have my purple purple, I want to go with my reddest red. So I'm going to take this one right here. I think that's my reddest red right there. And I'm going to go where it was really white, which is right. And now I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it all red. I want the whitest parts to be red, this area right here. I'm like making sections sort of out of it. So it comes out of here. And this is the reddest section right there and I'm gonna just start going into it. I'm gonna try to color with the petal instead of coloring this way. I'm gonna color with the petal. That way if I see any pencil lines they're, they're running along the petal and not against it. And when I get into a spot where I can't do it I usually go circular. So if I'm gonna color here I can't keep going because I'll go into this spot. So once I get up to there I'll show you what I do. Now I'm going to go circles, which doesn't have a, uh, a pencil mark going in any direction. It's just nice and smooth. And I'm going to do the same thing for this short area right here. I'm just going to start going in circles. And there we go. There's the red section. Now all I got to do after this is to blend this red, lighten it up, and then make it a light purple, and then it's dark over here. So it's like I'm transitioning the color. So around this red, being that I still have it, I, by coloring I have this nice flat spot on my pencil. I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to take that spot and now lightly color around it. It doesn't have to look exactly like the picture. Generally like the picture. I'm not doing a, a, a photocopy of it. I'm not a photocopy machine, so I'm, I'm not even going to try. I want the general idea with it. I want to play around with the colors. Because right now it's about an asymmetrical design 
using value and colors. I, I, you know, this isn't about making a photograph of the uh, of the flower. It's getting the idea of the flower down and then making it my own by doing certain things with it artistically. I'm going to move to the purple, which also has a flat part, and I'm going to make this part lighter here. All the way around it. And it's going to be a, a nice light purple in here. I'm going to get really light around here. I want to get it really light where it's combining with the red. And I am going in circles. Now, where the, this dark meets the medium color or the lighter color, I'm just going to push in a little bit more so that I can't see where it changes. I'm pushing a little bit more in here and I'm taking, it, I'm taking that away. Not as hard as this, just a little bit harder. And it's more difficult to see where it turns from one to another. It's a little hard, not the same type of pressure, just a little bit harder. Now I'm gonna take that red again, and I'm gonna start blending it really lightly into the purple. And that'll give me my transition color. And I can also go back in and push it into push some purple into the red. We'll see if I need to. Purple and red, even though the red is a warm color and the purple is a cool color, they are next to each other on the color wheel. So they're really nice to blend together. They're, they're, they work well with each other for warm and uh, for warm and cool. All right, I got a little bit of purple left on there. I'm gonna. Push a little purple into the red, just a little bit. I'm, I'm hardly pressing down, just barely. Now, a thing I saw in here is that there's these veins running through here. So I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna run, now I have a sharp point here too, as well as the flat. I'm gonna see if I can run a little bit of purple through here. And I'm gonna push it in a little darker than what it is on there. Because again, it's not about um, making it look exactly like what you're seeing. You're, you're, it's, it's like you're translating it into a different language for yourself. Okay. There's none up here, but I, I just threw one there anyway because it, it kind of makes sense. There's also these little purple spots in there too. So what I'm going to do is take the flat side of this pencil and I'm going to drop some of those in there just randomly. I'm going to put a couple lighter ones down closer in. There's one over here, a little dark area here. Okay, there you go. Uh, we'll, we'll put a purple up in here too. There's a little red in the picture, so I'll throw a little bit up in there. There's petal number one. So I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to do the rest of the petals and then you're going to take a look at it and then we'll move forward from there. And I'm not too concerned about how this looks right now as long as I have my my value, my colors are blending together, I'm happy with that. Okay, so here's all the petals done now. <clears throat> I pretty much did the same thing here as I did with all the other all the other petals. There's that light area inside of each one where the lightest red and lightest purple combine and meet. There's these purple lines that I have in there too. I'm not really satisfied now that I'm looking at it with these. I like these dark streaks coming through so I'm gonna just jump in here real quick and darken these up. And it's all about value. It's all about the pressure that you put on the pencil All right, that's a little bit better. I did say before, and I'm turning around right now to grab something. I did say before that I made it darker uh, for a particular reason. These pencils that I have are watercolor pencils. So I haven't used these pencils before. Um, the, the pencil brand I usually use uh, is really forgiving. And as soon as you put the water 
onto the colored pencil, it really spreads nice. So I don't know what this is gonna do. This is, this is the first shot at this I'm ever gonna take on this video with these new pencils. So I don't know if it's really good or not. So to play it safe, I'm gonna start with a little water and start with the dark purple and kind of see, oh, oh no, it's good. Oh, that's a nice wash right there. Oh, wow. Oh, I got something to do tonight. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Uh, hopefully that's coming up really good on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the video. So that worked out really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work this water in here to see what it turns into. Um, but if you have pastels, which actually do work with water also, you could do a wash with pastels. Um, you can, instead of the pencil and uh, blending them in like that, with pastels, dry pastel pencils, you can use your fingers and rub those together with your finger and make bright areas too. So I'm gonna start working with this water <laughs> to see what I end up with, because this is gonna be interesting. Uh, but the, I like the, the look of the pencil too, but I'm just gonna experiment with the watercolor. Um, I think as I'm looking at this now, I think I'm gonna prefer just a regular pencil style. I think I like this better, but I'll see where I'm going with this and uh, I'll, I'll come back. Okay, just got finished up with the, uh, with the painting here. And uh, interesting, um, I think what I'm gonna do is these areas here and here, I'm gonna try to continually like lighten them up as best as I can. Um, it, it, this, this color just keeps spreading. You could just keep doing it over and over again. It's really cool. Um, this is really fun to use these uh, watercolor pencils. Uh, I have some for the school, uh, but they don't work as well as these pencils. Uh, the ones that we have at the school, sadly, I have to get the type that are a little bit cheaper so they don't spread as well as what you're looking at right here. Um, so we'll, we'll see when we get back, uh, back to school. We'll, we'll see what we can do with them. Um, hopefully we can uh, do some good work with it and I have to experiment with those uh, in order to see how much deep color you put in so that you can get really nice light areas. Okay, there you have it. That's how you would make this Georgia O'Keeffe inspired, off balance, asymmetrical, changed emphasis, focal point, pastel, crayon, or color pencil piece of artwork. So those pencils I had, um, watercolor pencils, uh, they worked really well. The Reeves watercolor pencils work really well, very washy. But again, like I said, I really wish I knew that they worked that well. Very happy with these, uh, these watercolor pencils. Uh, Reeves work really good. And I really wish I was even lighter with some of this. So if I come to school with a bunch of Reeves watercolor pencils for some reason, I know exactly what to tell you and how to do these. All right, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And we're gonna go with uh, round four next, which is a little more difficult than the this one and the previous two on YouTube video. So stay tuned for the next one. All right, guys. Thanks for painting and making art. And if you make any of this stuff, please send it to me. Google Classroom, email, slides, get it to me, and I can get it out there and show the great work that you guys are doing. All right, bye.